Hello, hello, it is I, James, coming back at you with another homeless shelter story. This week's homeless shelter story needs an advisory. Um, it contains blood and an injury of a sexual nature. And it's coming from a homeless shelter, so viewer discretion advised, right? So last week, I'm a little bit stressed, man. I cannot sleep. I'm working on some art. There's some crazy stuff going on at the house. So I step outside at about midnight to have a smoke. Well, about 30 seconds into this smoke, a door flies open with way too much energy. And I instantly know whatever's going on, I'm sucked into this situation. And that's just how things go here at my good homeless shelter. Well, who stumbled out was the subject of tonight's story. And we're going to call him Mech. And Mech is short for mechanic. Now, Mech isn't even a mechanic. He's a manager of mechanics. Think something like Walmart, where there's a giant mechanical department, and there's just a manager there to manage people. That's what he does. He manages people. He's not a mechanic, but we're going to call him Mech. So Mech stumbles out, kind of slurring his words, instantly sounding debatably drunk, which I'm sure he was. And he comes out, and I look at him, and I go, oh, hey. And he instantly just kind of disregards me and goes, ah, you see the ambulance here? I was like, no, no, I don't know what you're talking about, ambulance. He's like, yeah, the ambulance came and I hurt myself. I hurt myself bad, real bad. And like, it's weird, right? I'm not just saying it weird. His body language is weird. The pausing he's using in his speech is weird. The childish I hurt myself language is weird. I mean, at this point, I'm thinking this guy's either wasted or he has some type of head injury, right? Because he's acting goofy as hell. So I sit next to him on the bench, and the first thing I notice is this. Him sitting like this. Like, it really hurts to sit down, right? He is just leaning kind of all of his body, both tensing against pain and looking like he doesn't... He's bracing himself, you know? Like, if he falls at all in this direction, it's really gonna hurt. And at this point, I still don't know what the hell is going on because he's just barely communicating. He's just kind of stumbling. I hurt, I hurt myself, the ambulance, they came. And I'm like, do I need to call the ambulance again, dude? What is going on with you? And right as I'm questioning him more, another gentleman whose name doesn't matter right now to the story comes out and starts grilling mech as I'm talking to him, right? He kind of gets in his face and is like, you cannot leave some mess like that in the house. It's disgusting. You cannot do something like that and walk away from it. What you need to do is to quit fucking drinking so much and then go clean your shit up. And I'm like, wow, this is intense. You know, I don't know what's going on here. So I inquire, I go, well, wh exactly how bad is this? And the guy who walks out looks at me and says, fucking bad. So I'm like, oh, wow, shit, okay. And Mech, the guy who came out, is like, I'll take care of it, I'll take care of it. And I'm like, dude, it looks like you can't even stand. If this is like a bad mess, whatever happened, I guess the ambulance came and you didn't want to leave with the ambulance, I can't see a bunch of blood on you, and I'm not about to do a pat-down check to a somebody I live with. I mean, it's a homeless guy, right? <laughs> Listen, dude, sucks to be you. I don't see any blood, so I kind of think you're probably okay. But, you know, I throw it out there. I throw it out there partly out of curiosity and partly just to get away from the porch situation because he's hard to talk to and the other guy is just angry. I'm like, well, I'll go clean it up, right? Whatever it is, it's not that bad. It sounds like it's blood. I've been in the military, I can clean a little bit of blood, it's not that problem, and I don't have to worry about getting sick, right? I feel like I can clean blood in a safe way, even though it's a bunch of homeless blood. <laughs> I'm homeless too, I've got gross blood too, <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I feel like I can do that, right? It's not that big of a deal, probably to a lot of people it is, but it's something I can be like, okay, I'll go clean up this dude's fucking bloody mess. Well, it was not just blood. And apparently a lot of people had not seen this. Whoever had found him had called the ambulance, and then like one other person had seen the mess. So I was one of the very few privy to this information. Now, what was inside were several different splatterings and smearings of blood all around this bathroom. There is also 
a dark brown substance, generally in the same area as all the bloody smears. There is also a giant, pretty prominent, bloody puddle on the middle of the bathroom floor, kind of in front of the toilet, and there is a bunch of bloody poop in there. Now I know this is gross, but there's something about stool. Stool looks a little bit different. Now how am I trying to say this? If you have a bloody gut and you take a poop, your stool is sort of infused with blood, right? <laughs> it's a colorful poop. Now, since I was cleaning it up, I couldn't help but notice, well, first was poop and gross and mushy, but secondly, it was kind of all one color and then in the blood around it. Which sort of makes me think that this wasn't like a random stomach injury where you had to like take a bloody shit or anything it was okay well there's more also in the shower there is a bloody handprint and unmistakably some poopoos going down the shower wall now as i was taking this all in and i was pretty fucking astounded i did not think it would actually be this bad the poop the blood and i can kind of piece a scene together like what happened right judging by the amount and the body movements, um, the main injury or whatever definitely happened on the toilet, 1,000%. He must have stood up in pain and just lost bowel movement right there. He might have fell because there was kind of a smearing out, and then he must have went into the shower to clean himself up to a fairly minimal degree before he just left the bathroom. I guess, and went outside to go have a cigarette. I'm not exactly sure. I'm still piecing this together myself. Anyway, it was so much more disgusting than I thought, and I cleaned it up in about 10 minutes. Now, I go search Mac back out. One, because I just cleaned up a bunch of his blood and shit while he wasn't capable of it, and I kind of want to yell at him for that. And two, just to make sure he's not about to die, what in the hell did I just see? And he's still kind of acting like he has a concussion. I hurt myself. I hurt. And then the first time I see his injury is when I come and see him again. He has a, a puncture wound on his elbow. And his story is, oh, I got up off the toilet and I fell down and I hit my elbow so hard on a heater, it punctured right through and look at it. And he's he's acting really strange when he's showing it too. Like he's... It's not just like a concussion or drunk behavior. It's almost manipulative behavior. Like his body language is so much pay attention to this and nothing else, even though there wasn't anything else to, at the time to really pay attention to. But he goes so far as to kind of like squeeze his wound, you know, and it is a wound. It is a real puncture wound that he has on his arm. And every time he squeezes it, blood kind of, you know, comes out at a fairly thick and accelerated rate and his fingers are dirty and he just keeps touching himself and he hasn't really washed himself up yet and I'm like hey man don't touch your wound go wash yourself there was a bunch of shit in the bathroom and he's like well no there wasn't and I'm like yep yes there was go wash your hands quit touching your wound right so he goes inside, washes his hands, and there's a big commotion by the bathroom. And some people are chatting him up. And he's almost... And he says the, something that I don't expect him to say. Like, as this is all going on, like... By the way, how would you expect somebody to act, right? Like, this whole situation just happened. They're still acting like they have a head injury. You can kind of smell alcohol on them, so you know there is alcohol involved. Something... Some super embarrassing injury took place they lost a decent amount of blood but now when you're checking on them they're sort of like have all this energy showing people this injury and you have this knowledge that like yeah that's not the real injury it was just weird you know it was weird what was weirder is that like i think it was to keep this lie up he actually invited a few people back to his room to smoke with him like smoke weed and I remember going in there and I didn't smoke this weed because, like, this guy is, like, being retarded. 
Like, his hands are disgusting with blood and what has to still be some feces. Like, they're just marked up. He keeps touching himself. He hasn't changed his clothes. And he's sitting there breaking apart this weed for everybody to smoke. And I cannot believe there's a little smoke circle in this guy's room, for one. Two, I can't believe he's not in so much goddamn... Like, why does he want to smoke with these people? Three, some of them are, like, the younger people in the building who don't have rooms. And they... They, like, shouldn't be in your room smoking with you. And it just, like, hits me how odd this behavior is. And I'm not really describing it. This, like, oh, I hurt, I hurt myself. Look to this wound. Totally not proportional to the, like, evidence of injury in the restroom. But then, like, this really weird sort of not only out of character but out of moment behavior for people to be around him? I don't know. Just who loses that much shit and blood and then wants to go smoke a bunch of weed and they're obviously in pain. Like, it was a charade, you know? What was strange was, like, before I left and I was like, okay, guys, you have fun smoking your blood weed and I didn't say shit weed because, like, I'm kind of trying to hold this guy's, like, secret, you know? I want to ask him about it to make sure he's okay, but, like, he's around other people and they've decided to have fun you know, and he's like maintaining this kind of like center of attention sort of thing. That's not quite out of character for him, but like it's just off and weird, you know, like the mask has slipped a little bit and he's trying extra hard to keep it on and keep everyone's attention at, on something at all points in time in the room. And he just keeps talking about his injury, right, his injury and messing with it. And no doubt that puncture wound was part of the fall, but it was not responsible for all of that blood. I don't know what he did, but I'm guessing it involved some type of toy that he hid after the fact, and that's why he left the bathroom so quickly and left it as a mess. And yeah, he was probably just in shock, ashamed. You know, he's a guy. He didn't want to admit that shit. And so I don't know. There's a lot of different ways to look at this. You could look at this as like, what the male ego does to somebody <laughs> during an injury. You could, there's just a million different ways to spin this one. And yeah, that was just a strange thing that happened. Have a great day.